Good morning, everyone, and welcome back. On today's topic, we're going to be talking about one specific species of fish. This unique species is a species from Mexico, from the region of Jalisco. It is the butterfly gadead. Butterfly gadead, also known as Ameca splendens. Ameca is a monotypic genus, which means it's only one species of fish within this genera. It's been given the name Ameca because it comes from the Ameca River drainage system. Splendens, on the other hand, is derived from Latin, and it's the inflected form of the verb splendere, which basically means to shine. And it's a, it's a reflection on the, the species. When you look at the species, the, the males particularly are covered with all sorts of little reflective specks. Very, very shiny species. This species was described by Miller and Fitzsimmons back in 1971 and is a species of Gadead. Gadeids are characterized as live bearers, but they are live bearers that have split fins. If you look at the anal fin on this species, this species has a, an anal fin that has a slight split in it, and it's basically a modified anal fin. Unlike guppies, sword tails, platies, mollies, who have a gonopodium, this species has a different structure. The structure is called an andropodium, and it's particular interest in this method of reproduction that separates them from a lot of the other live bears. Another unique trait that separates gadeids from a lot of the other live bears is a structure called a trophotania. A trophotania is essentially uh, very similar to what we would have as an umbilical cord when, uh, when human children are born. Gadeids are born and they actually pass this structure out. It's still attached to the offspring and then it sheds off very soon thereafter. This species, like most gadeids, are usually fairly threatened in their environments, if not extinct. And the International Union for Conservation of Nature, the IUCN, basically lists Ameca splendens as extinct in the wild. Extinction of this species and most gadeids in the wild is primarily due to habitat loss, destruction of the habitat due to uh, urban use, and agricultural runoff. This species inhibits clear water springs. It likes a nice warm water, but it's a seasonal species. For long-term success in keeping this species, a winter rest is a must. Temperatures lower than 20 degrees Celsius for two or three months so they stop producing fry. In the springtime, slowly increase the water temperature and they'll start spawning. Spawning will usually stop once the water gets to about 28 degrees. So long-term success, give them that little rest. But the other ideal factor is it makes this species ideal for northern climates for tub culture, for outdoor pond culture, maybe even only seasonally. But I bet you when you pull those fish in in the fall, they're going to be absolutely breathtaking colors. Telling the boys from the girls or sexual dimorphism in this species is very, very easy. The boys are a lot more colorful. They have a bright yellow crescent on the end of their caudal fin or tail fin. Their dorsal fin is substantially larger. And the anal fin, as mentioned prior, is the one that has got the split fin and the modified reproductive structure called the andropodium. Females of this species tend to get a lot larger than the males. Now they say in the literature that this species rarely exceeds 90 millimeters or three and a half inches in length. But uh, in this tank alone, as you've seen, I have a female that's well over four inches in size. So perhaps in captivity, they can get a lot bigger than they would in the wild. It is a very, very fast moving. It loves big, beautiful streams of clear water. If we look to its natural habitats, and we, and we look at it specifically from a husbandry standpoint, or its biotope, this species is, is loves current. It loves structures using rocks, roots wood with small areas of vegetation. As I mentioned, it's very, very gregarious. Intraspecific aggression or aggression between the species is often observed, particularly between the males. 
The level of aggression is decreasing with the number of fish kept in the aquarium. And it's a pr pretty prolific spawner. So if left to its own devices in a beautiful tank set up with rocks, pots, driftwood, open areas for swimming and some vegetation, the species can quickly reproduce and then you'll end up with a nice very large school of them and that will greatly reduce, reduce aggression. I've always kept them with other cichlids. As you can see, this nice little group of pair of Mernay. I also have some uh, Paranetropus bulleri in this tank as well. And they make excellent dither fish. There is sometimes a little bit of fin nipping once in a while, but this tank's 160 gallons. So I think long-term success, they should be fine as long as the population is kept in check. Feeding this species in captivity is very, very easy. In the wild, it is primarily a vegetarian. So having some plants in some fast growing plants in the aquarium is excellent. Supplementing it with some vegetable based properly prepared foods. It is an excellent uh, algae eater and will graze on hair algae that grows within the tank. I also supplement their diet with any of these foods that are coming out now that have uh, black soldier fly larvae, different bug bites and different foods. Many brands have them. And I think this in combination with a vegetable based diet, it leads for very, very good success and long-term health. It's a very aggressive feeder, so making sure that you're feeding properly, that your other denizens in the tank are also going to be getting food, is, is critical. I think it's a wonderful little species of wild live bear. A lot of them are pretty much gray or brown, but this one here does have that very distinct bright yellow crescent on the males. I think it's a wonderful addition in my tanks, and I like them. Hope you've enjoyed this highlight on this wonderful little species of Gadead. It is a care species, so it does need our help in the, in, the, in the aquarium because it's no longer really available in the wild. It has been reintroduced into several spots, but uh, putting it into a, into a creek in Nevada is not its natural habitat. By introducing it into its non-area, this is considered an invasive species. And due to its gregarious nature and its quick reproductive capacity, this is a horrible species to be introduced into an area where it's not natural. So as aquarists, we need to be responsible of our fish. We need to be careful of our fish. We need to protect our fish. We want to keep those fish for generations and generations. We want to do our part. Be responsible taking them to aquarium society meetings, sharing them with others that are, share the same passion but never, never release the fish into the wild. Now let's just sit back and watch them swim. Thanks, guys.